I did a series of teachings here and I was literally talking to a camera. It's much nicer to talk to people. So thank you for joining me. Our preacher for today is going to be Teresa Person, who is about to become a pastor in Huron. And so she and I are working on some of those pastoral skills over the next couple of weeks. We are in the season of Lent. We will continue our teaching series on the Ten Commandments. And so for those of you who are at home, those of you who are here, I hope you're scratching your head and wondering what the commandment is that we're going to today. I'm going to leave you guessing. Teresa will introduce it just now. There are one or two notices. And if you haven't received a copy, you can go online and see what's happening, or you can pick up a copy at the office. Our church meeting places will be kept clean. We have been talking to our cleaners. They came in last night. They cleaned our church. Meeting places are available, but I am going to suggest that you speak to the conveners of your meetings to decide whether they continue. That literally needs to be a decision that gets taken by each group that meets. There are some things that have been cancelled in the life of the church. So Monday evening harvest table has been cancelled in, in the interests of keeping people safe. It's a really tough decision because I know at the same time people are hungry. Um, it was one of those impossible decisions to make. Wednesday evening, Manny in the Middle has moved. It's moved online. So we're inviting you, stay at home, grab a meal at home. You know those awesome meals that you get at home. And log on, and you will find me online at 6 o'clock on Wednesday evening when we can have a short service together, but in our homes. Um, there was a meeting that was due to happen this afternoon, at well, this evening at 7, to talk about our church's processes up to the general conference. We have decided we are postponing it. We will give you more information about that. So, whether you are in front of your computer or whether you are here with me, all of us join together to worship God. And I'd like to hold that sense of the community is still gathering. 
we are all in God's hands, and God is with us. You know, for, for your information, God doesn't live in a building. It's not like you come to church to visit God. Because God is in your homes, God is at your workplace, God is in our town, God is in our state, God is in our world. Let us together today continue to trust God with our lives and with the life of our world. And that is why we worship today. We are going to sing together, and I'm grateful for our, for our musicians who will help that singing happen. And it's deliberately chosen. We are going to speak the words, it is well with my soul. Words that speak of, of our faith that says, even when we are frightened, even when we are struggling, we will continue to say, it is well with our soul. Far be it from me to not believe, even when my eyes can't see, and this mountain that's in front of me will be thrown into the midst of the sea, and through it all, through it all. The way. 
Let us pray together. O oh God of all creation, you are the beginning and the end of our world. You existed before time and will continue when all time comes to an end. Help us in our worship today. We ask this because this is a very difficult time in our lives, in the life of our nation and in the life of the world. O oh Lord, it is difficult to pray and to sing songs and to hear your spirit as we watch the spread of a virus that makes us all afraid. Because of this, we turn to you. We ask you to strengthen our inadequate worship. Breathe your Holy Spirit into our words that we might have courage for life. Teach us how to hear you in this time we spend together. Grant us the grace to live to the best of our potential. Grant grace to all who are caring for our town, for our nation, for our world. Bless the healthcare workers with wisdom and strength. Give insight to those who are developing a vaccine for this virus. And we pray. We pray for those who have been infected and affected by the virus. We weep with China and Iran and Italy for the loss of life. And we stand alongside other nations as this virus overwhelms healthcare systems. Give peace to those who grieve the loss of loved ones. Give strength to caregivers and bless us all with the certainty of your loving strength in this time of crisis. O oh Lord God, as we spend this brief time together, touch us with your peace. And this we ask in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray together, our Father, who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We have, we have just prayed for healthcare workers. I do want to introduce you to one of them who is with us in the person of Bunny. Can you get Bunny on the screen um, for those at home? Just briefly, Bunny, tell us what you do in the system here in Brookings. Sure. So my name is Bunny Christie, and I'm the infection preventionist here at the Brookings Health System. So that's the hospital in Brookings. My job is in infection prevention, so right now I am dealing with COVID-19 and educating patients and the staff and helping to take care of those patients. She is not the only one in the life of our church, but she has offered her time. If there's anyone here who'd like to talk to her after <coughs> the service, she's here. If there's anyone who'd like information, she will be, we will be putting some links of hers on our web page because she has given updates on what's happening in town and we will point in the direction of those links. Um, but we are asking for prayers for people like Bunny who are working really hard to try and keep us safe. God bless you. Thank you. Teresa, what is the commandment? Do you guys know what the commandment is? Yeah, I can see. Do you guys at home know what the commandment is? Teresa, do you know what the commandment is? Great. My 
check. There we go. We are on and ready to rock and roll. Well, let's start that over then, shall we? Good morning. My name is Teresa Pearson, and I currently serve as the church's music and worship director. During this season of Lent, we have been studying the Ten Commandments, as Pete just said, and today we will look at the Fifth Commandment. Honor your father and your mother so that you may live long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. Honor your father and your mother. And today I'm going to be reading from the book of Ephesians, chapter 6, verses 1 through 4. So if you have a Bible with you or a Bible app that you would like to look at and join me in that, once again, that is Ephesians, chapter 6, verses 1 through 4. As for children, obey your parents in the Lord, because it is right. The commandment, honor your father and mother, is the first one with a promise attached, so that things will go well for you, and you will live for a long time in the land. As for parents, don't provoke your children to anger, but raise them with discipline and instruction about the Lord. Here ends the reading of our Holy Scripture. Would you please pray with me? Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and redeemer. Amen. Broken home. I've never really liked that term, probably because I come from one, and I don't really like the negative connotation. The definition of a broken home is a family in which the parents are divorced or separated. My dad left when I was three and a half, and my brother was a newborn baby, leaving my mom to care for us on her own, barely able to make ends meet. I grew up in a small town, and in my class of 20, only one other kid had divorced parents. We were the two kids that came from broken homes, and everybody knew it. Certainly, I am not the only one here today or the only one listening to this sermon that comes from a broken home. And I'm sure that many of you can relate to my situation. Coming from a broken home doesn't mean that I had a bad upbringing, that my parents are somehow awful people, or that I have a horrible relationship with my parents. And on the flip side, those of you that come from an intact family didn't necessarily have a rosy upbringing filled with sunshine and rainbows either. When we think about our parents, hundreds of different descriptors come to our mind, good and bad. Some of us grew up in wonderful, loving, supportive homes, and others couldn't wait to turn 18 and hit the road and never look back. So when we look at this commandment together, honor your father and your mother, we all come with different baggage, approaching it from a different place in our hearts. And it also depends on what stage of life you find yourselves in at this time. Because I know that my perceptions of my parents have changed greatly throughout the years, especially once I became a parent myself. What does it mean to honor your parents. Let's look at the word honor. To honor someone is to regard with great respect. R-E-S-P-E-C-T, find out what it means to me. I can't say that word without singing that song. But what does it mean to you? What does respect mean to you? What's your definition? The Oxford Dictionary gives the following definitions. One, a feeling of deep admiration for someone or something elicited by their abilities, qualities, or achievements. For example, the director had a lot of respect for Douglas as an actor. Or number two, due regard for the feelings, wishes, rights, or traditions of others. And this example phrase reads like this, young people's lack of respect for their parents. Wow, that hit me. A phrase so common that it shows up as the example in the dictionary for how to use the word respect. 
young people's lack of respect for their parents. Is that really the prevalent feeling in today's society toward our parents? And maybe toward our elders in general? We've all heard the phrase, respect your elders. That's nothing new. And I bet the teacher's lounge is filled with stories and complaints about how this new generation of kids just has a lack of respect for their elders. But I'm also pretty sure that my teacher said that about my generation and my parents' teachers about their generation and so on. We tend to think that the lack of respect gets worse with each younger generation as they relate to us. And yet somehow, somehow, I think we have forgotten to show respect and honor for the generations that come before us. How can we demand respect from our children if we are not honoring our parents, grandparents, and elders? Our verse today from Ephesians starts by saying, As for children, obey your parents in the Lord, because it is right. I think it's an important distinction to draw out the words, in the Lord. Obey your parents in the Lord. Now, this assumes that the parents are also adhering to God's teachings and commandments. Are we commanded to obey and honor parents that treat children in ways that are against God? According to the Child Welfare League of America, the CWLA, in 2017, there were 1,339 victims of child abuse or neglect in South Dakota, a rate of 6.2 per 1,000 children, an increase of 36% from 2013. Of these children, 90% were neglected, 12% were physically abused, and 4% were sexually abused. And last July, our community of Brookings was shaken to the core when a toddler was found dead in her home just a few blocks away from here, neglected, starved, and dehydrated. Do we honor those parents? The commandment says, honor your father and mother, period. So what do we do with that? We need to keep reading. This is the first commandment that also contains a promise. So that things will go well for you and you will live for a long time in the land. Perhaps this is less about giving honor and glory to your father and mother and more about how you feel in your heart. When we let anger, resentments, and bitterness live in us, it changes who we are from the inside. The following quote in a magazine caught my eye. The trouble is there are a great many instances of parents acting in very hurtful and dishonorable ways. In such relationships, the thought of showing such a parent honor brings pain vulnerability, and often terrific anger and deep frustration. In such relationships, learning to forgive is a key component in learning to honor. In 1 Peter chapter 2, the Apostle Peter says, Honor everyone. Love the family of believers. Have respectful fear of God. Honor the emperor. You were called to this kind of endurance because Christ suffered on your behalf. He left you an example so that you might follow in his footsteps. He committed no sin, nor did he ever speak in ways meant to deceive. When he was insulted, he did not reply with insults. When he suffered, he did not threaten revenge. Instead, he entrusted himself to the one who judges justly. He carried in his own body on the cross the sins we committed. He did this so that we might live in righteousness, having nothing to do with sin. By his wounds, 
you were healed. Though you were like straying sheep, you have now returned to the shepherd and guardian of your lives. Honor everyone. Follow in the footsteps of Jesus. Turn the other cheek. That's easier said than done, isn't it? Forgive deep, painful hurts. Jesus says that we should forgive each other 70 times 7 times, a number that represents boundless forgiveness, boundless forgiveness. Family relationships are hard, so hard, and it can be difficult to show respect, honor, and love for each other if you don't really understand one another. So take the time. Take the time to really get to know each other. All too often, we know what buttons to push to make someone angry. But do we take the time to learn how to communicate with kindness? In my readings, I found an author who suggests that we learn each other's languages. And I'm not just talking about spoken language. It's more about learning what makes each other tick. Some people need words of affirmation. We need to use words to build each other up rather than to tear each other down. Others respond to gestures of kindness. Just do something nice for someone without expecting something in return. Give a gift just to show that you are thinking about that person. Or better yet, give the gift of quality time. Put the screen away and give your undivided attention. Every person has at least one of these love languages that resonates more with them. And when we learn our family members' languages, we can begin to understand each other in new ways and connect on different levels, seeing each other through different eyes. So right now, some of you may be sitting here or at home thinking about a strained relationship in your life maybe a strained relationship with your mother or father. Maybe it's been that way for a long time. So long that you can't imagine it being any different. It would be easy, really easy, to just hold on to a lifetime of anger and resentment. But please, please don't choose that. That's what this sermon series is really about. It's not about... Ten Commandments or rules that we need to follow to stay in God's good graces. It's about the ten best ways to live an abundant life, which is truly what God wants for each one of us. So here's the real challenge today. Do you have a broken relationship that needs healing, either with your parents your children, or someone else that's important in your life. Take the next step. Reach out and begin a dialogue. Choose to start a new day together. So can I close by offering a prayer for our families? Lord, Please shine your light upon our families. Give us strength to overcome difficulties through past and present hurts. Guide our conversations as we try to find words of healing. Bring us together as we are meant to be in your holy family. And Lord, may the love that binds us only grow stronger as we live fully into the lives that you have created for us. Help us to forgive each other just as you have forgiven us through your Son, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Now I'm going to invite the band to rejoin me on the stage as we join together in singing a song called Waymaker. And that is what we are asking Jesus to be right now, to be that, that Waymaker, light in the darkness. 
Can he make that way, be that bridge for us right now as we are learning to forgive each other? You can sing along with us if you'd like, or you can use this time as a time to really let what we've been talking about sink into your heart so that you can make a way forward. Yes. 
If I can just remind us, Wednesday night, there will be a service. It just has moved off-site. So you can grab an awesome meal at home. Six o'clock, you can log on. There will be a service. Um, secondly, for those who are asking, this service and other services will be archived. So you can access them after this. So you can tell your friends and family that they can still participate because you'll find the services archived on the website. Just a comment. Um, as you know, I've come here from South Africa. And before I came here, I belonged to a men's group, a Christian men's group that met every Friday morning at half past five for prayer and support. And they gave me a gift as part of my leaving, which is a cap which says, be strong and courageous, for the Lord is with you. It's from Joshua 1 verse 9. So you're going to see me wearing this cap for the next little while. As a reminder that we need to be strong and courageous. You see, God accompanies us through crisis. And it's up to you and I, as the people of God, to have grit to be the people who can hold a community steady. When we see others who are afraid, let us be the ones who help calm their fears. Let us be the ones who help hold the course in our community. Because together we will see this through. Because God helps us be strong and courageous. So I'm going to bless you. And it's my hope that in turn you will become a blessing to others as they, as they are held steady by you. So may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, may the love of God and may the presence of his spirit be with you and with you and with you today and forever. Amen. God bless us all.